and bring the belt around the ball of your right foot, holding your two tails of your belt evenly, left foot down. Or if you've got the loop in your D-ring, you made a, a little loop, you can place that over the foot, D-ring on the front of the foot maybe. It's quite tricky not to get it to slip into the inner arch. So the D-ring helps it stay around the ball of the foot. And then you'll have this super long tail. To be honest, I actually quite like this variation. Sometimes I like to really extend out through that left leg and then just bring my arms overhead and hold softly, hold softly on the belt and, um, you know, draw into that kind of split style leg position. Some of you might have different angles and you might be here, for example. So you might have your left knee bent and your right leg might be at a 45 angle. And in fact, you may not want your arms overhead. You might be down here with your shoulders grounded and your elbows down. Remember that the pelvis has to be level. So you're not lifting your bum and you are, you are very grounded. So please find the best version of Sutta Bhanagastasana for your body. You'll notice in um, yoga as well, there are other fantastic ways of using the belt. When you get into these belt loops, so if this loop that I've got around my foot was one whole belt loop, then the great thing to do is to loop that belt around the other leg. So in other words, I'd be under the buttocks of that other leg and this would loop up to the top leg. So it would be helping to secure around, yeah? So it would be this type of thing. And, you know, we're not doing that version today, but you can really find a lot of creative ways of helping that posture. So you have left foot standing or left heel grounded, right leg into the sky with the belt, those of you that aren't using belt or are more uh, comfortable with this, you have got your index and second finger wrapping around the big toe. Big toe mudra, take another breath in and out and then take that right leg out to the right using your belt or using big toe mudra and then settle, anchor that left arm onto the earth, spread out your shoulders and enjoy. Maybe close your eyes. What is the quality of your breathing? Inhale, exhale, and then release. Give yourself a little wiggle. But you can linger there a little bit longer if you prefer, of course. But we're now going in shortly to second side. Remember that this posture can be a whole yoga lesson on its own. You can just practice this pose, three-way leg stretch or supta padarvastasana. You can practice this as one whole lovely, delicious yoga offering to yourself. Meanwhile, start to come into that left leg. You can point and flex, you can circle your ankle. If you're familiar, come straight into posture with or without belt. Think about that idea of maybe even taking arms overhead, noticing qualities of alignment. Essentially, don't let that right leg flare away too far. Can you bring yourself into your own hip wide position? Linger, savour and enjoy. And if your left leg, as it comes to sky, isn't really firm and straight, then you will need to bend your right leg and put the foot flat. So no need to be in the same position as, as, as this. There is literally no need to be here. You can be here for even another year or so. So find your belt, find the way that this works for you, maybe you've got a cushion underneath the head, big toe mitra for some, and then when you're ready, sweep that left leg out to the left, but you've got to make sure that you don't roll onto the left buttock. So your right foot is very grounded, or your right foot, even better because you're a yogi at home, is grounded into um, the skirting ball. So if you push that other extended leg, if you're using the two straight leg version, if you press that into the skirting board, it will really provide a lot of um, foundational energy for the posture. Allow breath to happen, really connect to your breath, to your pranic energy, to your life force. Mm. 